Hello yep. again for everybody. This is Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Aldacascos. My name is Sunny Pabuaya. I'm the co-host with Sifu Aldacascos. And again, make sure you have your pens and paper ready to take on some great notes, some great gold nuggets that these two fine gentlemen will be giving you. Again, let me introduce to you Sifu Al Dacascos. Guys, welcome to sunny, not sunny, sunny. We're talking about sunny Hawaii. We got a lot of blue skies and fantastic ocean and, and sunny in the Philippines. I know you're ready, ready to go to bed, but you're going to have to stay awake for us, with us for, to answer some really serious questions. I am so excited and has been with us for ages. I mean, when we were young, handsome man, have hair on our heads and very spunky. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that goes, back, that, I think that goes back over 30, 40 years. Yeah. Or how, how long is that? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Uh, over 30 years now. Yep. Right. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you got a chance to see Sonny, Sonny right now as is. And naturally we go back into his past, but just, just to let you know, I just feel really nice about it. And, if you can, just everybody give him a nice little clap of welcome. And come on, guys, give him a clap of welcome over here. Okay. Thank you, Sonny. You can clap for yourself, too, so we can have more noise in this place. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's get going on this. Um, Sonny, you know, there's a lot of questions that people ask, you know, especially after I came back from the, uh, the Philippines working with, uh, working with you and Mark on the, uh, the film. Yeah. And a lot of them, you know, got to see and says, well, how did Sonny Susan actually begin in, in the martial arts and, and where was he born? And, uh, you know, he's so good looking. How old is he? And especially the women, right? Okay, so uh, so let's start. You know, uh, how, old were you, how, how old were you when you, get start, when you got started in the martial arts? You know, it's, it's interesting. Last year... Um, my, my stepfather passed away and uh, yeah. my older brother who I hadn't seen for some time since I've been here in the Philippines came out to uh, the funeral and of course you start reminiscing about things in the past and um, so we started talking about martial arts because in uh, 1975 my stepdad who's in the US Navy was uh, stationed here in the Philippines at Subic and uh, it was at that time that we started taking uh, Shorin Ru Karate, 1975. And I, I, I thought that was my foray to martial arts. But actually, my older brother said, no, 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 no. We were taking Shorokan and Waipahu before we moved to Philippines. Mm. I was like, I vaguely remember that. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were probably like four years old, five years old. And I said, well, I remember going to Waipahu for some reason. He goes, yeah, that's because we were taking karate there in Waipahu. Shotokan. I said, that's interesting. Oh, just just as a kind of a precursor to my my current career or my longest, my longevity in this, what I do for work. Yes, uh, I remember, long. what I remember from uh, an incident that was coming from Waipahu with my mom at the time. I think it was Cam Highway. I, I was sitting in the front seat of the car. And uh, at that time, you know, we didn't have to wear seat belt. And I leaned, I, I was getting sleepy and I leaned against the door. But I didn't shut the door all the way. And I actually fell out of the car that was moving. Wow. And uh, surprisingly, I think I was so relaxed that I tumbled and all I remember is a bunch of cars swerving left and right trying to avoid me and uh, my mom of course pulled over she was freaked out and then she lifted me up nothing was wrong with me other than scratches some bruises and scratches and all she had to do was take me to the icy store to get icy and I was good <laughs> <laughs> you know for those of you that don't know what Sonny is talking about, Waipaho. Waipaho is a little small town on the island of Oahu, 
uh, in the Hawaiian chain. On uh, pretty much, this is where a lot of the uh, top martial arts artists I feel began because Wai Paho is basically in the old days it was mostly with Filipinos, right? That's right. Yeah, I mean, it's it right. was like a Filipino town, you know. So uh, yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, that that's fantastic. That's maybe that's where you got your martial arts training and your stunt work is learning how to roll and bowl all over the place <laughs> I, yeah it's just kind of like went together um you know when you're growing up in hawaii for me like martial arts wasn't uh you know some people take it for different reasons right they, they, they love the self-defense they love this or that love the movies whatever for me it was just the, the the movement the movement in itself was like how people can appreciate like ballet or something like that so you know when you grow up in hawaii you get access to uh so much martial arts stuff because everything coming from the far east transitions through hawaii then to mainland usa and in hawaii that time i still think they get them there's a japanese channel k-i-k-u mm. right channel 13 i think it is uh, back in the day anyway so right. um we had a uh, all the Japanese live action um, things that were the precursors to Power Rangers. We had Go Ranger, we had Rainbow Man, we had Kikaida, and then, you know, all these giant robot uh, cartoons. So everything was martial arts, martial arts. And then back at that time, we also had, um, you know, drive-in theaters. We had Sunset right. Drive-In. In Waipahu, we had Cam Drive-In in the uh, Aeopro City area. So... I watched those classic Kung Fu movies there. Five Fingers of Death, I saw it at Cam Drive-In. Um, Enter the Dragon, I saw it at uh, Sunset Drive-In, my problem. So, you know, those those things just like attracted me to martial arts right away, just, just by watching the, the movement, yeah. So after you know, the uh, initial childhood years, as I think most people have a tendency going into their teen years, your interests get kind of dispersed into so many different things. So I went into different types of sports. Uh, I took up track and field. I played soccer. I played football. I did motocross. I was surfing. And it wasn't until I would say my late teens that I got back into martial arts again. And then it then became a, a serious you know, matter of understanding now what it is that we're doing beyond uh, exercise as a kid. You kind of think it's a fun thing to do. But uh, yeah, at that time, um, that's where uh, I met Mark. Of course, I knew about Kajikemo growing up in Hawaii. Um, I think I might have taken a few classes at Edmund Lewis's school, Leeward, Leeward Temple, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid. But uh, I'll tell you an interesting story. When I started working at Universal, uh, in the Conan show, and where I met Mark. So uh, while I was training, there would be times on uh, on the set where people would make these comments like, "Oh, Mark moves like that," or oh, "Mark does that," or "You look a little bit like Mark." And I'm thinking to myself, "Who's this Mark guy, man?" So you know, a little bit of the the local boy and me start pumping up my chest. Hey, man, who is this smart guy? I'm going to show this smart guy who I am when he comes. <laughs> and uh, of course, then we had the, I think it was like a, a, a general cast meeting because the summer was coming up. That means there's going to be, you know, thousands if not millions of people coming to uh, Universal Studios that year or, or for the summer season. So we had to meet with the cast members and i remember when mark came in right away i think i think people told him about me like oh there's this other new kid who's joined the crew and and what i noticed right away was that mark greeted every single person shake hands how are you how are you how are you i mean really took his time going around to everybody just to check with them walks up to me and he goes, hey, I heard about you. I heard you're from Hawaii. I'm like, oh, wow, this, you know, I can't be mad at this guy. He's so, so nice. And then um, I went to uh, look at the new roster that they were filling up for the summer um, cast members. 
And as I was scrolling down, I saw Mark's name. And I saw Mark, the Costco's. And I thought to myself, oh, I wonder if. So the next time I saw Mark, I said, uh, uh, are you related to Al the Costco's? And he goes, yeah, that's my dad. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I thought small world, right? Because, you know, Sifu, you, you, you doing uh, martial arts for years and having a lot of recognition through magazines and old school fighting. I mean, you know, all Hawaii people know uh, who you are for what you've done for Kanju Kembo and, and uh, Hawaii martial artists in general. So uh, that's kind of where things went in terms of, of martial arts and how, how I ended up uh, getting into one half ago. Hmm. When, um, when did you move from Hawaii to California? Um, you know, when you're a military boy, military kid, you go back and forth, whatever your, your parents are stationed. So we went a lot between Hawaii and San Diego, back and forth, Hawaii, San Diego, aside from the time that uh, he was stationed in the Philippines. So... I permanently, well, I should say permanently, I should say as a teen, preteen, I moved to mainland Hawaii, 19, uh, mainland San Diego, 1979. And uh, yeah, 79, went to high school in San Diego, graduated in 85. Well, now I'm aging myself. <laughs> hmm. So, so your, your dad was in the Navy or Army? Uh, Navy, yep, Navy. So oh, yeah, that's right, because San Diego is a Navy base. Yep. That's right. Um, so while in California, was that, I mean, you were starting out in the martial arts and you wasn't training, I guess, in the martial arts then when you were at Universal, were you? No, uh, I, I was actually, you know, I, I, I was doing so many things at once. When I started at Universal, I totally went there on a whim. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because I used to have a personal training business uh, while I was going to university. And uh, my uh, training partner had auditioned for Universal. He, he got the role as, as Conan. And then told me, oh, you know, the next time they have another audition, you should go and try out. So I just kind of just went, yeah, okay, let me try. And that's how I ended up getting. But that time that I was training... Uh, Uh, doing a, a training, uh, personal training. Otto Schumann, I know you you know Otto Schumann, uh, Stuart Schumann, right? Mm -hmm. Kimpo guy under Bill Rusaki. His, he had a, a, a school at the gym where I used to teach. So I would go in there and spar his students every once in a while. And um, I mean, that, that kind of brought back my memories from, you know, my childhood years. And I, I thought I should get serious about training martial arts again but running track and field going to school having this job was you know re really difficult to juggle all those things it wasn't until i started up at universal uh and that man met mark because mark was I, i have to say you know mark was was extremely generous in, in offering me to train with him um He knew I was into surfing. He had just started surfing at that time. So he said, hey, you know, if, if you don't mind, you know, uh, I need to get better at surfing. And, and if we can go out, you know, surf, why don't you train Kung Fu with me? I thought, oh, this is going to be awesome, right? But what I didn't know what I was stepping into <laughs> was, was Mark saying, okay, come over 5 a.m. 5 a.m.? What are we going to do at 5 a.m.? We're, we're, we're going to train in the alley. I'm like, oh, my God. And, and this would be consistent for a certain amount of time <clears throat> before his, he got really busy with the movies and the TV shows. So up to that point, uh, we would just, him, uh, Keith, we would, we would go train in the alley and I just thought to myself, you know what, he's not, he's not running this like a formal martial arts class. As a matter of fact, he said, understand I'm not your teacher. We are training partners. I said, okay, that's fine. And it wasn't until, you know, he got super busy. He said, uh, you know, Sonny, I'm not going to be able to, to train so often anymore. I think you need to find a teacher. Uh, if you still want to stay in the system, I can recommend you to see who Earl. I said, okay, yeah. 
and I, I, I was serious with it. The, the, the situation was tough in that um, the entertainment industry is a grind, you know? A lot of people think it's it's so famous and so glorious and they have no under understanding that it's a grind, it's hard work, you know? And, and, and it's not something that you can necessarily do like a nine to five, like a lot of people think. You need a lot of luck, you need a lot of skill. And when you work a job, you may work for three months at a time, three to six months at a time, and you have to wait for the next gig. And uh, in terms of the entertainment business and trying to juggle it with the martial arts, it's, it's a tough thing because you end up traveling so much. Aside from, from doing the Universal, I ended up working on the Power Ranger show. That's, that's a sun up to sundown show five days a week. You know, so at that point, how can I train as much as I want to train? Where it's like, um, I, I would sometimes only be able to work out on the weekend. And then there were times where there wasn't any work, where I could go uh, four to five times a week training martial arts. So, you know, it's, it's just entertainment business is a really strange animal. You yeah. really got to be passionate about it, you know, because it, it's not as easy as people think. You know, I know that injuries do happen. And I want to ask you a question. Were you there on the set of Conan at Universal when Mark got cut across the face? It happened just before, before I, I, I joined the cast, but he told me about it. A lot of people, from what I understand that happened, it was just, uh, so yeah, anyway, I was saying that, that, what happened with Mark is is not necessarily anybody's fault per se. What I understand is he went to he had his condo and he went to try to block, and uh, whoever the, the the guy was playing Conan, his sword came around a little bit too wide, yeah, and 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 then cut through his face. And Mark himself didn't uh, know that he had that cut until he finished the thing and he saw the blood pouring out. And he was oh my god, you know. So I never looked at the at doing that Conan show like, oh, this is dangerous work because it's just so fun. But yes, of course, people get injured. Uh, mm -hmm. I've sprained my ankles on that show a couple of times, and uh, fortunately, I never had any really bad injuries. But uh, stunt work is something that we we do to minimize risk, right? But the risk is still there. Safety first when it comes to stunt, yeah. Yeah. Um you know that was that i guess that must have been your introduction into filming stunt work what was your first oh that's good what was that picture all about uh i'm doing a, a test uh jumping off the third level of a parking garage uh for the actor there's a set of pads probably about 12 feet from lower than that but it looks like you know the way they're going to film it looks like he's jumping from a much uh, higher position to like, uh, I think they're going to cut it to like, he looks like he's landing inside a dumpster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that was, that was pretty recent. That was just like a month ago. So that, that picture. Yeah. Um, you know, most, most of these days I'm, I'm behind camera running the action, but, uh, I, I did that test because I would never ask any of my stunt performers to do something that I haven't done or couldn't do myself. So usually when it's something like that, I'll test it. What was your, what was your uh, breakthrough moment? For stunt work? Yes. I would, you know, I have to say it's Power Rangers. Yeah. Tell me about that Power Ranger thing because I saw some really good shots of you. Okay, so there's something to be said about being at the right place at the right time. Okay. Um, and we all know opportunities, preparation meets luck, right? So uh, my one of my good friends at the time, Walter Jones, the original Black Ranger, known as the character Zack, he was a dancer and also working at Universal Studios. Um, I also had a background in dance and had a 
career that I was juggling as an actor, as a stuntman, as a dancer, as a this, as a that. But we were hanging out one time, driving around Hollywood, and he said, "Hey, Sonny, I just did this TV show, this TV pilot. Uh, it's like we're wearing these costumes, and then we do all martial arts kind of stuff." I said, "Oh, sounds sounds familiar." And he goes, "Yeah, I think it comes from Japan." I go, "Oh yeah, I grew up with that stuff." So I told him what he was talking about. And he said, "Hey, you know, um, about a week later, he said we got picked up. We're going to do 25 episodes or 23 episodes, whatever number it was. Does you want to come and, and work on the show?" And I said, uh, "No, I'm not interested right now because I don't want to get tied into, you know, just one thing as I'm auditioning for all these different things." In the following year, so second season, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, my other friend Danny. Who was uh, a roommate of Walter was already working on <clears throat> Power Rangers, but he asked me to come if I was interested in doing this this one one day gig on uh, one of these B movie uh, action things. Just he goes, hey, so we need some guys to come play Mongolians and uh, just do your fight thing. I said, yeah, okay, sounds fun. So we shot it that day with the stunt coordinator that day. His name is Jeff Pruitt, and um, Jeff goes, "Hey, you, you know, you look a little bit like Mark." I go, <laughs> uh, "It must be the Filipino thing." <laughs> and he goes, "No, no." He goes, "You look like Mark. I just worked with him." I go, "Oh, really? What you work with him on?" He said, "I was a stunt double for Scott Wolf on Double Dragon." I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. Small world." He goes, but listen, hey, I'm I'm the stunt coordinator, fight choreographer for Power Rangers. You want to come and work on this show? So just like that, at that time, I felt like, okay, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll come and and work on this show at that time. So Jeff brought me on, and through Danny, who was working as a stunt、uh, or one of the stunt guys at the time,、uh, one thing led to another. I stayed on with Rangers for a few years. Ended up doing a live show. Um, a touring show that brought me everywhere, all across the U.S., even to Europe,、um, and then eventually、uh, even brought me down to South America, where I ended up directing the show down there. So the interesting thing about Power Rangers was it was, I guess you could say, it was like quote unquote my regular job because I was known as a day player, meaning that if they needed a guy. For two, for four or more people for any certain day of the shoot, then they would call you and come work. Well, it was pretty consistent work for me, but I didn't have to、um, necessarily work because if there was an audition coming up or I have another gig with something else, it allowed me the flexibility to do so. So Power Rangers, in 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 essence, was my film school because I saw how fast、um, they shot. Uh, Koichi Sakamoto eventually took over the stunt coordinator position, and Koichi, you know, has worked with Mark on Drive,、mm -hmm. on Mark's movie Drive. So I know it was going to be a really good, really good project. And so I'm watching how Koichi worked, and watching、uh, Sean, who was the、uh, director of photography, work. You know, understanding angles and this and that. Now I wanted to point this out.、Uh, Where Power Rangers is concerned, because it's a kids' TV show, a lot of people don't consider the stunts as something dangerous or hard. Even the fight stuff. Yes, it may not be as as intricate as like a big budget movie action or something like that. But to try to fight in these costumes without hurting each other or hurting yourself is a skill in itself. You know.、Uh, It's not as easy as people think, so it's it's a very underrated thing to work on Power Rangers, and that and people not realize how difficult it is to do fights in those kind of costumes.、Mm. So it it gives you this awareness of space and distance and timing with other people that、uh, is an advantage to doing any other kind of martial art or、um, stunt fight choreography. You know, it's interesting because you mentioned that people say that you look like Mark. I'm beginning to wonder if you're my lost son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what, though, Sipu?、Uh, 
it, I used that to an advantage one time. I think it was 1994. In 1994, uh, at the time, was supposed to be the fourth international country Kimbo tournament, which eventually became called the Kinji's tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you were there, and uh, Sifu Molia was there, and I was I was fighting, and I heard these people like whispering. He's got a Costco shirt. It must be at the Costco skin. So I use it to my advantage. I see, yeah, I'm a Costco skin. So it kind of intimidated people. And I won. But sorry. <laughs> That's cool. You know, there's a lot of things that happen in your life, both professionally and personally. What's your worst fear? That I don't. My worst fear is that I don't accomplish what I set out to do. Um, and, and it's interesting how, how what I mean by that. Um, everything that I've done in terms of what other people might say are accomplishments, uh, whether it was in the dance world, a stunt world, stunt coordinating world, fight choreographing world, I never looked as like, oh, that was the end all. It was always a stepping stone to something else. And uh, my greatest fear is that I get, how, how do I say this? That I get complacent <laughs> and end up and, and, and end up settling for less. And I don't want to do that. So Let's turn it around. What's your most inspirational moment? Oh, too many dimensions. Um, in terms of in terms of uh, working in the, in the industry or life in general. Well, you know, there's sometimes that your private life can affect your your professional life, and vice versa. Mm. One mm. will pull you into the other. So you mm. know, I'll just take it in general. Okay. Um, uh, okay, I I'll use this particular uh, occasion where, where you don't know what's going to happen unless you try. So it was a, there was a weekend, I had just finished martial arts uh, training at Sea World School, was going home, this middle of summer in LA, so sweltering heat. And uh, this is before cell phones, yeah? So I had a pager, my pager goes off. It's my agent. And he says, hey, there's an audition back in Hollywood. They're only seeing a select number of people. Uh, and they requested you to come. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I, I'm exhausted. It was a long day training. It's a super hot day. Should I go? And uh, ultimately, I told myself, you know what, Sonny, you know the choreographer. Um, just, just go. So, got back in my car, sweltering heat, back into Hollywood. I get to um, the location, and my friend Courtney, who was running the show, just says, I think there were maybe, maybe eight of us in that room. And I don't know, if, you know, people are familiar with these cattle calls where, where dance stuff is concerned. You can get 100 to 300 people in there and just be there all day long auditioning, not even knowing if you're going to get the job, you know. Even if you do good, you do good. Doesn't mean you necessarily get the job. On this particular day, Courtney says, so this is the deal. I'm going to teach you guys six moves, put you on tape, send it off. And if you get the gig, you'll know by 4 p.m. Sure, fine. Okay, so we learned the movements. We did it on camera. Done and done. Go home. Four o'clock comes along in the afternoon. I don't get any messages. So just kind of said, okay, another job, uh, another audition. Try, didn't get it. It's okay. So I thought, okay, let me go out and get a bite to eat. And maybe just a few minutes after I left my place, my, my page is blowing up. So obviously, I think they're trying to call me. I get back home. And... Uh, this is, a, again, aging myself. I look on my answering machine. 
there's like a ton of messages there. And I call back and Courtney goes, oh, see, Sonny, so they, they saw the tapes. They, they want you, man. I'm like, oh, that's cool. But he goes, so you have a passport, right? I go, yep, got a passport. And he goes, uh, all right, so you're leaving tomorrow for Budapest. But holy <laughs> what? Just like that, you're going to Budapest. I go, wow, that's so cool, that's so cool. All right, uh, let me start packing. He goes, wait, 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 wait. You don't even know who you're working for yet. I go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who's it for? He goes, it's with Michael. Michael, Michael Jackson. Oh, so what? Okay. So, right? End up going to, to Europe, uh, Budapest, my first trip to Europe. We were out there for, I think, three weeks shooting a uh, Michael Jackson short film, came home. And from that point on where my dance career was concerned, I'm like, okay, you just work for the King of Pop. Where do you go from here with dancing? <laughs> you know? Uh, it, it, those little instances, like I said, you know, as much as I downplay the Power Ranger stuff, it's a significant part of my life that, that has given me the foundation to do what I do now as a stunt coordinator. The dancing stuff affects my ability as a fight choreographer, right? To right. be able to create fights in action. Uh, as Jackie Chan, you know, always mentions, fight action for film is more dancing than fighting. You know, you gotta cooperate with each other. You guys gotta feed off of each other's energy and speed and, and distance. So, you know, you minimize risk. So that's definitely having a dance background is an advantage for me when it comes to fight choreography because I understand movement and how this all connects if you think about it, Sibu. It goes back to my childhood years where I looked at martial arts for its movement, the beauty of, the beauty of its movement, the expression of its movement, right? Later, the martial arts leads to uh, the Kung Fu and the the Kung Fu led to, led to Universal, and Universal led to Power Rangers, and Power Rangers leads to Michael Jackson. So that's why I'm saying that it's never any one thing. It's all connected. Right. So definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed and fortunate to, to have these experiences. And when I say that my greatest fear, it would be to say, if I've done all these things and I don't continue to strive to get better and bigger in a way that could influence people in a positive way. That's what scares me because then it's what I believe I was created to do. And if I don't do it, then it's wasted talent. There's nothing in life worse than wasted talent. All right. Well, <clears throat> that's really super good for you to say that. It reminds me about a turtle because a turtle never goes forward until it risks sticking its neck out. And That's you right. Do. That's you right. Risk and you move forward into that. And speaking about, you know, taking risks, at any time in your life, did you find yourself having to defend yourself? And what was your outcome? You know, uh, of, all, all, of all things, um, you know, as, as you mentioned, martial arts is like insurance. Good yeah. to have it, hope you don't have to use it. Right. right. <clears throat> it wasn't until I moved here to Philippines. Imagine from the time in my 20s where I was hardcore training, like oh, super hardcore training to now in my later adult years where, you know, awareness of, of your environment and reading people's energies and all these things <clears throat> come into play. And it happens here when I move here to Philippines that I get into a fight with the guy who thinks I'm trying to take his girl. I'm like, oh my God, it's crazy. So the interesting thing about that was when he, it, it, it was kind of trying to, you know, this guy tried to blindside me and I saw his punch come peripherally. So I was able to react in a way that was just, I call the, the old, old crap block. Your hand just come up, right? It's a natural position. But from this position, I almost went into, you know, this drilling, what we call the hubad movement in Filipino martial arts, right? So the punch came, and it was still had a very strong uh, force coming forward. I just remember I just caught it like this, and it was still moving toward my head. I just rolled my elbow, so it looks like Bong Sao from Wing Chun or whatever you want to call. Boom. 
pushed him off. And we're still kind of going at it. You know what I mean? And the first thing that you realize is like, wow, it's like slow motion. I saw everything that was happening. And somehow we ended up on the ground. I was able to trip him and uh, I fell on top of him. So I was holding him down a little bit. Someone tried to pull me off. Next thing I know, the guy tried to shove his thumbs in my eyes. And uh, I was able to snap his hands off. Um, it was like whatever he tried to do, I was able to counter and move to the next movement. I think just because of all that previous training that I did before. Um, of course, now you're in this situation where there's, uh, from his side, definitely you could see the emotional rage that he had. But for me, I didn't feel like any kind of emotion per se. It was almost like I was outside of my body seeing how things were going. And at, at some point, it was really funny, Sipu, that... Uh, when, when, when he, after I slapped his hand off, uh, you know, his thumbs were going in my eye, I pushed him off. The funniest thing was, I went to grab his windpipe with, with my hand like this, like this. So I'm clutching his neck like this to get him to stop. And he tries to fish hook my mouth. He, he literally did this. <laughs> so guess what I do? I grab his hand with my other hand and I bite on his finger. Now imagine, I got this like this, and I'm choking him like this. <laughs> when I play it back in my head, I think, oh, that's funny, you know, kind of kind of like a, a movie scene. But that was reality. So this guy, I think that his rage was just so strong that uh, I said, I got to end this right now. So I was able to put a, a, a sleeper, a rear naked choke on him. Well, was kind of in a weird position because he was uh, lying in one way on his back and I was kind of perpendicular to him. So I really couldn't sneak my, my elbow under his chin. But I was able to at least hold, the, uh, hold him down until security came and broke it up. So that was one incident. Uh, and then maybe a couple of years later after that, you know... Uh, I, I kind of specialize now in, in Filipino martial arts. Uh, so I really, really took an interest into learning different systems of FMA. And uh, I think my passion for it gets me into trouble. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw one particular uh, teacher here who was putting out videos. And I, I just was asking questions just out of curiosity, you know? Oh, so you do it like that or you do it like this this is what you teach what you teach you know and he's saying oh this is what you can do to defend yourself and as you know you know when we were on uh, the set of showdown in manila right remember when i asked some of the local stunt guys hey, hey, do any guys do arnis or screamer and a couple guys said yeah i do i go oh can you show me so he does this thing and i go okay what system is that? He said it was from this system. I said, oh yeah, I'm a little familiar with that. It's my little brother, my younger brother took up that system. I said, do you think you can do that in reality? And he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you're, if your teacher feeds you like this, then he's, he's not giving you the truth of what the attack should feel like because he's allowing you to, to train the technique. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with you, but now, you know, I'm going to just do this. Try to do the same technique that your teacher taught you. And I, I remember you off on the side kind of laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, what, come back to this story where I was watching this guy's videos. And he said he could do this, he could do this, he could do this. And all I did was reply back to him. I said, I, I, do you have any videos of you doing those things you could say you could do? Because he was kind of teaching and an instructional. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I put it on your uh, your page, so a Facebook page, so you could see. So I looked at the video, and it wasn't him. It was one of his students uh, sparring with padded stick with some other guy. And it didn't show those three principles that I was talking about. Those three principles that, the, uh, that I was questioning was, he said, you're using your alive hand 
uh, free hand to be able to check so that I cannot swing at you. Using distance so he can still swing at you. Uh, uh, distance management. And then the third, the third one was saying accurately striking different points so you cannot, uh, his the opponent cannot swing back. I said, wow, if you can do all those things in an actual fight, then fantastic. But in the video you sent me, I didn't see any of that. And that wasn't even you. So his reply was, well, if you don't think that I can do what I can do, then show up and let's spar for real. <laughs> well, contact spar. I said, okay, name the time and place. <laughs> so yeah, Sunday morning I went. We had our thing, and um, there was a lot of things that were extenuating beyond the circumstances, of course, of, of that particular spar. But at the end of the day, uh, we both learned a lot from from that moment of what we of what we did. And what I what I learned from that was just to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's times where people put themselves into a position and it either comes because a person's ego you know you're attacking the ego and could be their principles but in a way the the number three things or the most important thing to remember is what gets a person to a fight is a challenge the challenge may not be the kind of words but it comes out the same way, which means, oh, you think I can't fight? And that's mm. an ego, you know, no matter mm. how you say it. Oh, you think I mm. can't fight? And even if he's not saying it that way, the challenge is going to be like he did. Well, come back and let's see what we can do. That's an ego thing. And right. <laughs> the thing that, that, uh, that gets you into trouble is that. But the other thing is the thing that gets you out of trouble is to say, no, I, I was just complimenting you and, you know, I'm really, in other words, diffusing. And, you know, right. of course, we'll get into something else. That's a right. different topic. But, you know, I understand that some people don't realize that they put themselves into of trouble by offering that kind of situation in different words, tonality, facial language, in a way, transposing to them, oh, you think I can't fight? And that alone manifest into something where it becomes more challenging mm. wow you got a mm. lot of shit going on out there <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know, you know what's your next project um if you can well, talk you know, uh, yeah i can can pandemic has thrown a big wrench in in everybody's machine you know covid is is a very tough thing to work with uh, to work under the conditions of COVID. Uh, you have, of course, the, the, the risk of people getting sick. And then you have these safety guidelines that dictate how shoots can go. Um, it has increased the budgets just for safety guidelines considerably that it, it's very expensive to shoot. Um, I'm, we started a project last year. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I can say I'm proud of these things more along the lines of what I set out to do here in Philippines has come to fruition in many respects. And that one was to reinvigorate the genre, which was non-existent for some time. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, you know, the, the, the movies like uh, Tony Ja coming from Thailand was doing early 2000s when he did the Tam Yum Boon movies did a fantastic thing for Muay Thai and Thailand movies showing, you know, that martial art. That was preceded some years later with The Raid uh, from, you know, uh, the guys coming out of Indonesia, Iko Uwais, who Mark worked with on uh, the TV series, and the, the two guys, uh, Checha uh, and Yayan, who worked with him on John Wick 3. So, the Silat coming out of Indonesia is now getting this recognition, right? And I thought, wow, where's the Philippines in all this? Where's where's the Filipino martial arts? Where's where's the Arnis and the Eskrima? Where's the Kali? 
Hollywood has used it. How come Philippines hasn't come out with any movies like that? And I thought to myself, you know what? If ever I get the opportunity, yeah, maybe I go Philippines and, and try to do something for the industry, for the Philippines, uh, and for the martial art. So, 19, uh, sorry, uh, 20, 2014, 2014, I got the opportunity to come out here because of a film director who just came out of film school, Phil Am Guy, out of, uh, I think, LA, LA City College. He, uh, I helped him with this short film. He had never done action before. He had hired one of my friends who was one of his uh, cast members, acting guys, and said, hey, Sonny, got this young guy, Phil Am, coming up. You know, never done action. Can you help? Yeah, I said, sure, I'll help him out. About a year and a half later, I get an email from the guy. He says, Sonny, I'm in the Philippines. Going to do a big movie with a big action star here. I'd love for you to come out and stunt coordinate. So that's when I came, 2014. Went back the following year, back to uh, L.A., and then got another call. Hey, can you come out? 2015. So that's how I ended up coming out here and staying out here for that length of time. And in that time... I've had uh, two, two significant film works uh, come out of the Philippines that have made it to Netflix, which is a big deal. Uh, a movie called By Bust with a very well-known director who I have a lot of respect for named Eric Monti. Uh, he did this movie uh, called On the Job. I saw that in 2013 and I thought, wow, Really love this movie. Great storytelling, great acting. And I said, if ever I get the opportunity to work with this guy. So, you know, that's a recurring uh, uh, a theme in my life. If ever I get to work with this guy. So I think it's like kind of putting it out there in the universe. <laughs> Fast forward 2017, right? So I'm working with, uh, or hanging out with a friend who's on uh, the TV series On the Job that they're going to do with Eric Monti. He says, hey, Sonny, I'm going to do this photo shoot. You want to come along? I go, yeah, sure. Okay, go hang out. And uh, funny, from the time, you know, when we did um, Showdown in Manila, there was a young uh, martial artist on the set named Ian Ignacio, whose father ends up being an old school martial artist. Um, Levi Ignacio, who had a really good school in San Francisco long back in the day. And uh, he was a part of that cast. So Levi comes up to me and he goes, hey, you're Sonny, right? I go, yeah. He goes, you work with my son Ian on Showdown in Manila. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, really nice kid. And just we hit it off right off the bat. Next thing I know, uh, my friend who brought me to the shoot, Jake Macapagal, says, hey, Eric wants to talk to you outside. So I go outside, talk to Eric, and um, we talk fight stuff for maybe only a few minutes, but we end up talking about our love of movies, our love of this director's style, or that actor, this and that. Maybe 15 minutes, and at the end of that conversation, it was like, hey, I got this project. <laughs> I'd love for you to come on and help if you can. And Next thing you know, that's how I ended up uh, becoming the uh, fight choreographer and action director for Bye Bust, uh, which which made a big noise because it, first of all, the the lead actress um, had never done any action before. She was a TV show host and known for romantic comedies. So the challenge of of, of being able to do action with her. Working with Eric, who's a meticulous director in terms of detail, and he, he he loves practical stuff. You know, in this in this digital age where everything can be done via computers, Eric's kind of that bridge between the old school and new school. He wants to see that it can actually be done. So uh, definitely, that project by Bus was my most challenging experience as a stunt uh, coordinator, stunt director. And a couple years after that. I ended up doing a movie with another actress who had never done action before again. And uh, it's on uh, Netflix also. It's called Maria. And uh, Pedring and I had worked on another movie back in 2015. But this one was was something that we thought would, would make some noise. And it has. So, uh, again, 
uh, teaching our basis of FMA and screen fighting. It made a lot of noise and the production value was so good that it got the attention of Hollywood producers. So we are on hold for a movie that um, we were supposed to shoot here in Philippines. And this is uh, a co-production, executive producers coming out of Hollywood. Um, originally, uh, we had uh, an A-list actor attached. I I'm not sure if he's still attached. But depending on his schedule and where we might have to relocate because of COVID, uh, we still have um, a couple big names that are attached uh, that we'll see. I can't I can't mention the project just now, but uh, the actors' names I can't mention either. We are looking to possibly shoot it in Hawaii, Sifu, because we need we need Filipinos. <laughs> How long you've been in the Philippines now? For the better part of six years. Uh-huh. Yeah. So are you looking forward to coming back home? Uh I need okay, beach. Don't, you don't have to say that. I need beach. I need uh spam was to be. I need <laughs> <laughs> no, I the pandemic here has, has, has been very restrictive. So uh there are categories of quarantine status that's applied across the entire city of Metro Manila. And so right now we are in a modified enhanced community quarantine where we can only go out for essentials, meaning, you know, go grocery shopping or whatever. But there's curfew. You cannot go outside without mask, without face shield. It's tough, you know. So, you know, I know I know Hawaii is opening back up, right? There's a lot of yeah. tourists going back to Hawaii now. At least you can go out, get exercise. And that's what I need. I need that fresh air. Hmm. All right, give us some words of wisdom. Okay. Um, it's nice to dream. It's better to do. Sonny, you shared a lot of things with us, and I really appreciate it. It's coming to the end of our show, and I sure would like to have you back again, especially when you're back here in the USA and enjoying some of the sunlight and beautiful things that happen in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Sonny, I want to thank you very much for joining me here on the Beyond Kicking and Punching. There's a lot of things that you have said, especially for people that are trying to go beyond kicking and punching and mm -hmm. to figure out, is there life after a black belt or after the martial arts or kicking and punching? And it seems as though you've been very successful in doing what you're doing. So, Sonny, I thank you very well, much. I, I, here's one, one last thing that I'd love to relate from martial arts into anything that you want to do in life. I think most people go through phases of their life where they always think, this is the worst thing that I've ever gone through. This is the toughest thing that I've ever gone through. If you think about it, any one of those points in your life, yes, it must have been tragic or painful, whatever, but we always made it through, yeah? When it comes to training martial arts, that's what it is. The physical part becomes a mental part. And if you take what you take from the martial arts and, and apply it to your life, you know, whenever I have a difficult situation, sometimes mental, mostly on physical stuff. If something is really, really tough to deal with, my mantra is hold that horse stance. <laughs> Using failure to go to success. Fantastic. Yep. All right. I'm going to turn it over to Sonny, the other Sonny. And Sonny? Well, thank you very much, Sifu. Uh, greatly appreciated. Sonny, thank you again for being on Sifu Alice podcast, Beyond Kicking and Punching. It was a great interview, very inspiring. And if anything, it just goes to show that, you know, you got to put in the hard work and mm -hmm. then with a little bit of luck. But mm -hmm. you know what luck is really, it's like you said, it's the preparation beforehand that actually gives you that luck so that you're ready when that door opens, right? That's so right. again, That's right. thank you very much for letting people know that 
And so again, everybody, thank you for being on the podcast. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to write it in the chat or either email me or see Fuwal directly. And if you've got more questions or anything about what Sunny is doing, by all means, please let us know and we'll forward it to him and we'll get the answer to you. Again, this is going to be uh, replayed on our YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out. And if you are part of that YouTube channel, or if you do watch that YouTube channel, remember to like, love, share, subscribe, hit that bell icon so that this way you'll get notified for the next ones. Also, Sifu Al has his, you know, website, the Coscos Martial Arts. He's got a few videos out and he's got this big program that he's getting ready to launch. I would recommend you guys sign up on that as well so that this way you'll know what's going on. Again, thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Sifu. If, uh, if anything, have yourself a great evening, Sunny, and enjoy your sleep before you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good to go. Mahalo for having me on, son. And uh, Sifu, well, thanks. See you guys soon, yeah? Um, I want you guys to be joining me next week. You know, we've got Malia de Cascos Burnell. She's been a very heavy part in the promotion of the martial arts. Enjoy your weekend and let's go. Good time to be here, guys. And Mahalo Nui Loa, Sunny in the Philippines is going to be sunny in Hawaii. <laughs> that makes sense. Sunny in Hawaii. Well, yeah. well, the other sunny up, up in Canada is going to be sunny and it's still cold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Take care. Love you all. Be healthy. And God bless you all. Bye-bye.